Welcome back to the EVRC and in this video we'll be talking about the one ridiculous e-bike law that really has to change before someone gets hurt and it's probably not the law that you're thinking about. Now there are a few laws when it comes to e-bikes that may seem a bit silly. One is the power limit of 250 watts in the EU and the UK. Now I get it, the average power of a human on a bike is probably about that so the limit is designed so that the bike mimics the power of a human. Only it doesn't take into account the weight of the rider. 250 watt motors can really struggle with heavier riders especially on hilly terrain now this may not be a problem if you're relatively fit but then if you are you probably don't even need an e-bike you have it because they're fun well it's no fun crawling up a hill at three miles per hour because your bike has a motor that came from barbie's car so yeah the power limit is silly and way too arbitrary why not allow more power but limit the speed the bikes are allowed to travel now the speed is another e-bike law that might seem a bit silly to some 15.5 miles per hour, 25 kilometers per hour limit. Now, that's not the actual speed limit of an e-bike. That's the point at which it has to stop providing power. After that point, if you can pedal faster yourself, then you're allowed to go faster. Just don't pedal furiously. Now that is a ridiculous law, and it's not just e-bikes, it's push bikes as well. Honestly, look it up. You're not allowed to pedal furiously. The problem with the speed law is that some e-bikes can be hard to pedal without the power assisting you due to resistance from the motor. So you get this weird bunny hop effect, like when you're learning to drive a car. The motor cuts out, the motor kicks in, the motor cuts out, and so on. You end up hovering around 15 to 16 miles per hour, which in most cases is actually slower than your average rider can ride a push bike without any power. The speed limit is generally fine for those who are using an e-bike because they can't ride a normal bike, but again for the recreational e-bikers or the otherwise fit e-bikers that are commuting long distances, it's very annoying. So should the speed limit be increased? Now for me, 20 miles an hour is a good cruising speed, 15 miles an hour being a bit too slow, mainly because someone could just sprint up to you or your family whilst riding a bike and take it off you. Plus, 20 miles an hour is a very achievable speed on a push bike, so why are e-bikes being penalised? There's also the keeping up with traffic argument, the theory that the faster you are, the safer you are on busy roads. But the problem with this argument is that even at 20 miles per hour, you'll still be slow compared to a car, and they'll still want to overtake you. But as you're going a bit faster, you take that little bit longer to overtake, and then drivers start being a bit cagey and doing stupid things. And at what speed do you stop riding in the gutter like you do on a push bike? Or would it be worth going the motor vehicle route where you've got speed limit laws and it's up to the rider or the driver to comply lest they get caught by police? Obviously a lot of cars can go well over 100 miles an hour and yet the national speed limit is 70 and most of the time you shouldn't really be going more than 40 and yet cars that go over 70 miles an hour aren't illegal. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. It may be a question of insurance or taking an e-bike license to unlock higher speeds but neither the power or speed laws is the ridiculous law I want to talk about in this video. You may have guessed it by now and let us know in the comments if you did, but the absolutely head-scratchingly ridiculous e-bike law that needs to change before someone gets hurt is, you guessed it, or maybe you didn't, the throttle law. Currently in the UK and the EU, a throttle on an e-bike is only allowed to function up to walking speeds. That speed has been judged to be six kilometers per hour. After that, all power must be delivered using pedal assist. This means that the bike has to detect that you're pedaling and once it does, then the bike can give you power to take you up to 15.5 miles per hour or 25 kilometers per hour. That seems pretty harmless. Obviously a push bike does not have a throttle, but it does open e-bikes up to a few problems that you simply wouldn't have with a throttle. But firstly, why? What is it about a throttle that's so much worse than pedal assist? Now here in America, a class one e-bike is exactly like an e-bike from the EU or the UK. 250 watts, no throttle. A class 2 e-bike allows a throttle, still 250 watts, and it's got the same laws and restrictions, only at some places you aren't allowed to use your throttle. You're allowed to take the bike, you just can't use the throttle. What? I simply can't think of a reason why having a throttle is somehow worse than pedal assist, only reasons why it's better. In fact, without a throttle, I'd say you're more likely to get hurt or hurt someone else on your e-bike. Now this is the Engui P26, and one of the things I really love about this e-bike is that I can pedal around on pedal assist one all day long, get a bit of exercise, but whenever I want to, I can use the throttle and get maximum power that you would have got from pedal assist five. 
it's a brilliant little feature and it's one that you'd only have if you had a throttle so if I wanted to get out of trouble let's say some cars coming really close behind me and I needed a bit of extra speed or something like that I can just quickly engage the throttle and move away as if I was on puddle assist 5 now that instantaneous power of the throttle might be the difference between me walking away and me ending up on the bonnet of a boy racer's Corsa now this is the Escuta SX250. It's amazing, it looks like a moped, but it's not. It has pedals which have to be constantly turned. You don't have to put any effort in, you just turn the pedals. It's not getting any power from you, and that's the way the SX250 has been designed. The only reason you have to pedal is because it means the bike can comply with the law and be classed as an e-bike. I mean, when I'm at a corner that goes uphill, this can happen. Oof. Yeah, as I'm going uphill and pedalling and turning, the pedals can actually scrape the floor. To get around it, I actually have to stop pedalling. The problem is when you stop pedalling, you lose power and you're going uphill. So then I kind of have to pedal intermittently and just make sure I don't put the pedal down at the time when I'm turning, which requires concentration. Concentration that should be given to my surroundings and the road and other people. Another issue of pedal assist is that the power delivery is all or nothing. So if you are in a high pedal assist level, the bike can shove you forward quite unexpectedly. This is obviously dangerous when there's people around, let's say on a busy bike path, and you don't want to be constantly increasing and decreasing your assist levels. Sometimes you might be trying to get around a tight spot without getting off the bike. Let's say there's a troll under this bridge and you want to get over it as quickly as possible. That's really hard with pedal assist. It either won't kick in or it launches you into the bars. Now that all or nothing power delivery of the pedal assist is actually quite dangerous. Now watch me get through with the throttle. Without a throttle, you can suffer from a lack of go at the lights, especially if stuck in the wrong gear or going uphill. Remember, you can't just shift down like in a car. You need to pedal a bit for the chain to get onto the right cog. Now here I am on a slight hill, and if your throttle assist has a slight delay, then you're gonna struggle getting up because alas, I've left it in a bit of a high gear. So imagine I'm at the lights and they've just gone off, and now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, and then it, then it kicks in. But obviously with a throttle, oh, green light, off we go. Much nicer, not getting chunted up the ball. Of course you might be watching this thinking, well I've only got pedal assist and it's not a problem for me. In that case, well done you, well done. Now this is the DYU S2. I absolutely love this e-bike. Uh, it's 250 watts, it's tiny, so it's really compact. I basically use it in the same way that you'd use an e-scooter, but being 250 watts and an e-bike, it's legal. Only it isn't, because it's got a throttle. But here's me riding it without the throttle. It's just not practical for anyone taller than Samwise Gamgee to pedal. Your feet are going to slip off the pedals, possibly getting caught between them and the floor. Plus, you look a bit silly, and someone might beat you up just for that. Now I don't want to be totally one-sided, yes, I can't think of any reasons why a throttle is bad, but let's maybe try to think of some solutions. If you can think of any more problems or why throttles are bad, then do let us know in the comments. So here is our first solution. Now on this, the Escuta SX250, there's a green button. Now what that's for is to get you going when you're at the lights. Now it's really handy if you're up a bit of a hill, so you don't have to get yourself going with the pedals and wait for the pedal assist to kick in, it can keep going like this. And it only works under four miles per hour, but it gives you quite a big shove that can get you a bit faster than that, but it won't work above that. And sadly, after that, you can't use it anymore to keep power, you've got to keep pedaling. It's fantastic and really circumvents the ridiculous throttle law in a very creative way. It fixes the getting away of the lights issue and it also allows you to get through crowded places in a much safer way. Obviously it doesn't help at higher speeds so it doesn't fix all the issues. I don't know why e-bikes that fully comply with the EU and UK law don't still have a throttle that does the same as the green button on the e-scooter, i.e. works up to 6 km per hour, but they rarely do. To solve the cornering up a hill issue, bikes could give power for let's say 10 seconds after pedalling stopped. That would allow you to power up a corner without having to worry about hitting the floor with the pedals. Granted this isn't a massive issue on most bikes and it's a good job too since sometimes 250 watts isn't enough anyway and you'd still need to help out by pedaling. Now I did have a few other solutions but the video is getting way too long but let us know in the comments if you have any ideas that solve the issues I've mentioned. Of course some people with more expensive e-bikes may not have any of the issues I've mentioned. You might have a mid-drive motor that helps you out a lot or your pedal 
pedal assist kicks in instantaneously. But even so, I simply cannot work out why throttles can't be on e-bikes. And the reason, because it's then classed as a motorbike, isn't really an answer. But there you have it. There's a few weird e-bike laws, but that is the one I simply don't understand. Thanks so much for watching until the end of the video, and until next time, ride safe.